Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So, in this lesson, we're going to work some more on the Choose Character script. So, if I just downsize my node develop for now, I'm already in the Choose Character scene, if I hit play. So, we've already inputted code that will allow us to swap characters and have a sound effect when we do so. But the scene looks very bare at the moment. Now we will be working on character movement. Some sort of little demo of the characters going through the moves. In this scene. But first I want to get some GUI in place. So we'll get the most simple GUI in place to begin with. And I'm going to come right at the very top of the script and I'm going to create of type texture 2D underscore select character and we'll call this background or text background yeah we'll close the line off there into the comments and we'll say create slot in inspector to assign select character text background and in fact let's just copy that line we'll paste it in twice more and we'll change this name to foreground and we'll also change the comment there and for this one let's just get rid of background and we'll just leave this as underscore select character text and we'll just delete that from the comments and yeah, we'll paste it in twice more. I'm going to create a line break though. And we'll say select character. Arrow. In fact, let's put the left at the top. So underscore select character arrow left. Create slot in inspector to assigned. Let's just have select character arrow left and we'll do the same thing for arrow right in the next line we'll tidy up the comments as we go and of course change them as well so arrow right and let's come here and this can be of type private I'll make them floats for now. We'll say underscore foreground text width. Close the line off. I'm not going to assign a value yet. We're going to assign a value in a very different way this time. So let's get this into the comments. Creates naming convention for foreground text width let's just copy that line we'll paste that in and we'll just change width to height and we'll also change the comment there as well and the last variable private float underscore arrow size we'll close that line off now my arrows are going to be the same size on the height and the width and that's the reason why we only have one for the arrow size so let's get this into the comments Cre creates naming convention for arrow size and with those in place I'll just save there to be safe let's come down to the void start 
and let's come here and what we're going to say is underscore foreground text width is going to be equal to the screen dot width and then we're going to say divided by and let's try a value of 1.5 f let's close that line off into the comments so let's put foreground text width equals we'll say 1.5 f of the screen width on startup this means that uh, when the game actually begins and you'll notice this if you start in the inspector um, if your screen's a different size the GUI will reshape itself or resize itself based on the actual screen resolution it's being displayed at so a different way of doing things but a very effective way I feel if used correctly so let's copy and paste that line in and we'll change to foreground text height and let's divide the screen width we'll try a value of 10 and we need to change the comments so we'll change that to height equals You could either put a tenth as in text rather than just numerical as I have done here. But I think we all understand how that works. So, we're just dividing the screen height by 10. And we need to change this to height as well. So, let's come down here. And your arrow size. Now, whatever you set the height as... And as always, you'll probably want to experiment with these values. But the arrow size wants to be the same as the height here. So we can just copy that. And paste that in. And we'll put it into the comments. So we'll say arrow size equals the width divided by 10 so that's another way you could write this part here if you wish on start up so there's two ways of writing your comments you can either write it out like I have done here or you can just put 10 on 1.5 F. It's entirely up to you. As long as you know what you mean. The comments are for you and you alone. Unless, of course, you are working as part of a team. But I know for the majority following this series, you're going to be one person working on this game. So... I think we'll save it off and we'll leave it here for this lesson and in the next lesson we'll actually start getting some of the GUI code in place. So I believe we already created the onGUI function in the a previous video. So we just need to fill out that function. And I'm going to downsize this script and if I come to my GUI folder you can already see I have a select character folder within there and this is what I've created so I've got two arrows both left and right I have a foreground texture with as you can see the all set to editor and legacy GUI I have a transparent border or background to that texture I have a select your fighter text again with a transparent background. This is a must for this texture 
this one must have a transparent background and for my text background here this is actually a semi transparent texture you probably cannot see very well on the video but it's actually tinged grey a very light grey and it actually shows up better in game but as you can see here in the preview it probably just looks like it's a completely transparent texture but it's tinged now for the text background you can choose to do this any way you like um, you can use a solid color or you can use anything any sort of coloring you wish I'm using semi transparent but again that's entirely up to you I've just made these up quick in paint.net and I encourage you to create your own textures before the next video but as I said we'll leave it here for now as always I hope you enjoyed this lesson I hope to see you next time and until then as always bye for now